Hey and welcome guys. Uh, today we have this Slave 1 from Star Wars uh, built by AMT Ertl. Now I know I built um, the Slave 1 recently, the Revell 160th scale, 160 scale uh, model, which is a, a lot smaller than this one. I didn't like that one or anything. That one was kind of practice uh, to build a nicer one. So I plan on uh, doing a lot more with this one. I plan on lighting it and um, uh, the other one was a lot more helpful. Now, I did have a surprise when I bought this. I bought it off eBay. Uh, it was The box was had been opened, but it looks like all the parts are there. Um, so, But when I opened it up, there was a little bit of a surprise in there, and I'll go ahead and show you. Of course, we have all the parts. Now, I've already opened this, of course, and looked at it. Um, you know, kind of get a sense of the scale. It's uh, quite a bit bigger. Um, I'll have to look at the exact scale for you. Uh, it has some nice detail. A lot of it's raised, but that's not a big issue. And uh, But the surprise was, in the bottom of the box, is I had this uh, old magazine, the Star Wars magazine that featured uh, Boba Fett. And I uh, believe this, let's see if I can find a date on this, 1998. Um, so, uh, pretty old there, 20-something years old. Nice now. Thing. I don't think that came with the model. Someone must have put it in there because uh, I believe it included this uh, technical commentary of the Slave One. It's some nice pictures of Boba Fett, which is good when I, uh, I have a Bandai Boba Fett coming. So this will be a good reference to build that uh, model and detail it up. Yeah, it's a pretty cool little commentary and laid out cross section of the ship. So that was a, a nice little feature. Uh, in there. I don't know if it's worth anything, but definitely fun to have as a collectible. collectible. So anyway guys, uh, it's going to be uh, looking at the build. Um, you know, I know that uh, this assembling this and getting rid of that seam line that runs right down the middle will be a little bit of work. So you know, I'll have to figure out the lighting. Uh, we'll have the, uh, the three different engine lights and I'll have to figure out that. And obviously we're at the cut those away that's not a big deal and I have to figure out what exactly these aren't going to be so bad I had pretty much an idea just some uh, LEDs in there and then uh, up here though I'm not sure how maybe some strip lighting I might have to cut away that whole section in there um, it actually has the detail I believe uh, the original model had like these uh, bulbs in it these long bulbs and they've actually included that detail in there but I may not be able to just use that and may just have to do some strip lighting of some sort get some clear pieces um we get the of course the uh, canopy which i need to uh, probably clean up it's got some scuffs on it and then uh, oddly we have uh, han solo and his carbonite but it's a clear piece which is kind of strange since it's not really clear so i uh, plan on this uh getting jumping into this build all right, so a little work on getting done here. On the main body, I've filled up these, uh, or put these two hats together and just working on this main seam that's come across. So that's come along together. Uh, just trying to figure out some of the lighting. Uh, have some of these round engines come together to have a clear part there. And they did like connect into the body here, um, but I've drilled these holes out quite a bit. And so these will fit in here. I'll have some kind of lighting source, which I haven't figured out quite how I'm going to light that yet. Still debating. I still have to cut all that out. And for the cockpit, I'm going to be lighting it. And you have this uh, little seat and, I guess, control pad here. Now, you can see I've cut this out right here. This was a control pad. And what I think I'm going to do, instead of like putting a bunch of little fiber optics or little lights in there, is this have like a big screen. So I'll, uh, I've cut that out and... Um, Took my uh, my files and some sanding sticks to kind of get that into shape. And I'm going to put a uh, clear piece of styrene plastic uh, behind that, and then uh, when this part comes together, we'll have like a lit screen. So I'll have like a big lit screen. Uh, this will be facing forward, and we can probably dismount a uh, little LED right in the bottom of that, firing upwards. I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do the screen yet. To give that some detail, but I'm liking the way that's going to look. I think I'll have a nice look to it. Not really Canon or screen accurate or whatever, but um, I think I'll have a nice look to it. I have my little Boba Fett, so I'll have some detail painting on him. I made a little sensor thing on his helmet. Just have some wire. So I have to finish painting him. I, I did close this off. I forgot to mention 
there was a, a gap here. I've, uh, you can see, tell where I put some styrene in there. Uh, his feet kind of went in there. I'll have to cut his legs off a little bit to make him sit down on that, which will be fine. It won't be visible, uh, but I'll create our little light box for our LED in there. Uh, one other thing is I did, I think I was missing one part. There's these little um, side parts that goes right here to uh, hold this, his seat in. And it was missing this part right here. So you can see where I think some styrene and kind of fabricated a part that will go in there. And I'll have this stationary. It's not going to be revolving like it's designed to do. It's going to be lit and it'll be in the uh, upright position. So that'll be kind of permanently fixed that way. I can do all my wiring and stuff kind of from this point right here. So just keep going. All right. So uh, I've had to change things up quite a bit here and there as I go. This is a very fluid build as far as the direction I'm taking things. I've, uh, as you can see, I've cut away the holes, cut away this whole section right here. Uh, I did have a clear piece inside these engines. I've since removed those. It just wasn't going to work out in the light and it was getting in the way. Um, so now what I'm thinking is I have these 10 millimeter lights and these will come in here. And then of course we'll put the engine nozzles in here. I just have to try to figure out how I want to diffuse that. I mean, we could just put some like mesh material in there or something to block it. I don't know if I just want to have that bulb um, shining like that. As far as uh, this section in here, uh, what I'm coming up with so far, and this of course may change, this is a clear piece of plastic that I cut out. I had some uh, clear sheet styrene plastic. Uh, cut it out. Uh, I used some uh, clear sprue uh, just to add in a little bit of detail on there. And I painted it with a transparent yellow and then put a matte finish over it. I haven't light checked it yet, so I'm not sure what quite what it's going to look like, but uh, I'm kind of liking how that looks as far as uh, putting that in there. Of course, we'll have some uh, LED. I got these uh, this LED strip here that I still, still need to wire up. I got six bulbs. These are really bright, large LEDs, and they'll fall in behind here somewhere. I'll have to make some way for those to hold and also to diffuse the light. But I'm liking how that looks right there. I'm, I'm kind of happy with the, uh, the the extra detail that we've added into it. Uh, as far as the control panel, I did have to change things up. Originally, I was going to do this uh, uh, kind of whole dash panel on it, and it just wasn't working out. Um, it didn't look good. Uh, I had some issues with uh, how I was doing that. So I ended up like cutting this whole section off, um, making a new section out of some uh, sheet styrene, and, of course, you can see some fiber optics coming down. Now these fiber optics, there's a light bulb going to be down in the bottom of this section where this all ties into and that will light up. And then there's a clear piece of sprue right here and that will be, it's colored uh, blue on the bottom so it will have kind of a bluish tint. So that's why I'm coming up with that. Still a work in progress so of course that may change. Uh, one direction that I think I'm going to do instead of having the external light source, I found that the uh, 9 volt battery will fit into uh, this compartment right here. Now the model is designed to uh, have this open anyway and you'd be able to see the hand solo and carbonite. Uh, I'm not going to worry about having that. I won't want use it as kind of a, this, uh, a access panel to get to my battery. I think there's room in here and that way we'll have a little micro switch somewhere hidden on the ship and I've added in um, it had these little knobs, but it wasn't secured, so I kind of hot glued in a piece of round styrene. And so that will come in, and it holds in pretty nicely. So it won't, of course, it'll have a little bit of gap because it won't be glued in, but it, it holds itself in pretty nicely. And that will give us a way to access the battery when we need to change the battery out. Not too worried about it falling off. Um, you may just sit on some kind of display stand, just kind of vertical like that. So that's where I'm at with that. Yeah, still a lot of tinkering around to figure out how I'm going to do all this stuff. And, uh, but we're getting there. Uh, this seems getting there, um, coming out pretty nice. I think we pretty much got that one. A little bit of work still right here. We have a little lump uh, showing right there. And of course, this one's looking pretty good. So most of that's taken care of. And uh, what is that? Keep at it. All right, so I have a lot of stuff going on here. I'll try to break it down uh, piece by piece. On the main body, I've uh, attached uh, this uh, back part of it, 
Uh, now this door was supposed to uh, open up, but I sealed it. I'm not going to worry about having that open. It's going to be in the flying configuration. And uh, so that's already sealed up. And there were some gaps, so I put some, uh, some plastic behind it. Now, as I talked about, I think in my previous uh, segment, um, putting the battery inside, that's still looking good. Um, what I've done is, you can see, there's a magnet uh, attached to a piece of plastic in there, and that's to hold the battery in place. I had attached the magnet right here, hoping that would hold, and it wasn't doing a good enough job, so I had to kind of fabricate fabricate that. So I'll have my 9 volt, you know, be able to slide up in there, and then I can uh, push it up a little bit, because uh, I'm going to need that. A uh, little bit of clearance when it comes down too far it starts blocking the door so I have to hold it up here So that'll hold it in place good enough. Obviously if you shake it around it's going to come but uh, just being uh, Displayed it should be fine. Uh, I had the uh, door of course um, There's a little knob that came with it and just to make it a little bit more grippy I put a little uh, drop of super glue and some insta set to make it a little bit more pronounced knob So when I put this on it tends to well it was. I may have to put a little bit more, but that's the idea. Is there it goes, is to kind of hold that in a place better when it's uh, so this won't fall off. So that's where we have. That's what we have on the uh, main body here. I'm uh, working on the cockpit. I've now attached his uh, control center uh, to the surrounding cockpit. I've blocked it off. It's not going to swivel. It's going to stay in that um, position right here. And there was this area right here that. Um, I guess gave it room to travel. I'm not going to use that. I blocked it off um, so you won't be able to kind of look through and see the wires and all that other kind of stuff. Um, the uh, this control panel is masked off because I have some fiber optics and lighting in there. I'll, when I get ready, the uh, light will go right into that position, so I don't have to worry about that right now. On the back side, I've uh, attached the sidewalls to the back panel. As you can see, I have some aluminum foil. That's the strip lighting. As you can see the wiring around. That's just light blocking because I, I know if I don't light block that right there, it's going to leak all around the side. So I'm just uh, blocking it at the source of that aluminum foil. And it just has some hot glue kind of holding it in position. Uh, so we have our uh, engine exhaust here. There's two layers of uh, clear plastic styrene that have been um, sanded down to... Uh, uh, diffuse it and then paint it with some transparent yellow. So we have this layer and then we have a second one that's a few millimeters apart from it and then that's where the uh, LED strip is attached to and so that'll light up there. I've also went ahead and painted this uh, with some Vallejo steel. That way I'll just mask off this section when I go to paint the rest of that. So that's coming along. I have uh, the wings I guess uh, being glued together at the time and um, just trying to figure out step by step here, so I have to attach the engines and light. I haven't figured out where I'm going to put my switch to turn it on and off. I'm kind of thinking maybe in here somewhere on the, one of these side panels. That way it'll kind of be out of sight. Uh, I'd like to put it on the back somewhere, but there's a lot of detailing, and uh, I'm just not sure if I, I, I don't want to have a very pronounced switch. Plus, I'm waiting on the switches themselves, some micro switches to come in. So, uh, just trying to move forward. I'm getting close to kind of assembling this. Now, that's going to be a tricky part because none of this stuff, um, you know, matches up real good. There's going to be some gaps and some gluing and things of that nature to kind of get this all uh, put together. And then once we do all that, of course, we'll have to figure out how we're going to paint this thing. All right, now I've got most of the front part of the ship all put together. Um, Pretty difficult getting these uh, flarings attached to the body. They don't line up very well. Uh, I think the best way to do it is just use uh, a lot of super glue. Uh, take super glue with some insta set. That's going to be vital because you can set it pretty quickly. But I just did sections. I would super glue a section here and then come over here and glue and then work to, to the middle and kind of do the same thing. So uh, I believe it's on there pretty good. We got a pretty good fit. Um, I'm going to have some cleanup over here. I'm close to, uh, I'm going to prime over it and see what imperfections I need to work on. And then I'll do a base coat over this uh, part of the ship. All right, you can see uh, I'm working on the painting here. I, uh, you can see I've already started working on the detail painting around the flaring part of this. And what I did is uh, I just used some uh, micro mask. Um, from Microscale and just took a paintbrush and kind of painted it on. I looked at some images 
of the studio model. Did the best can. I'm not worried about being uh, terribly exact. And, and there's still more detail to put on, so don't kind of judge it just based off this. Uh, but you can see where I've kind of started pulling it off. And here you can kind of see where the uh, mask is still on. And a, a good way of uh, removing this, you know, I found, is just using some uh, uh, masking tape, a good strong masking tape. Now, I, I gave the base coat plenty of time to dry and cure over a couple of days, so I wouldn't be pulling off the base coat. Uh, painted over the uh, red and then uh, with red. And the red is just a mixture of kind of a, a dark red and a brownish red. A um, little bit of bright, but it's going to have some weathering and stuff that I think will tone it down a little bit. But anyway, uh, you can see, still see where some of the mask is at. And uh, I just take this on here, and sometimes it takes a few. There we go. And uh, pulls off the mask all without pulling off any excess paint. And so I just kind of go along, and uh, you can see what that's pulling off. So I'm just going to remove that. Now there's other colors. There's like a pink color that I'm going to just take the sponge technique and kind of go around the outside. It's not as pronounced as the uh, darker red. And get that. So I have to paint uh, the stripe down here. And then this, is, this section up here is also a uh, color. So before I move this masking work on the body, you know, I'll go ahead and knock out that painting on that too. All right, so I have the skirting pretty much all painted up. Of course, there's a lot of weathering that still has to go on it, but I painted my kind of my green accent colors on the top and bottom section. I also added in uh, a little bit of these kind of pink areas in there, and what I did with that is kind of stumbled on um, something that worked for me originally. I was just going to kind of find a pink color and sponge it on there, but I was uh, uh, putting in a few little uh, extra marks. I had some of this... Uh, base color left over and I was just kind of painting in some marks and kind of smudged it a little bit and realized that it kind of makes a pink color. So I started dabbing it around and taking a Q-tip and just um, taking most of it off and kind of leaving behind those pink accents and I think that worked out uh, really good and it was a really simple quick way to get that extra uh, detail in there with those uh, kind of pink accents. So pretty pleased with that. Uh, another thing is uh, I wanted to mention I found this um, Masking tape, this is from Scotch. This is a delicate surface, and it's very much like, uh, to, me, to me, a masking tape. It's uh, different than regular masking tape. It has that softer texture. It's not as sticky, and it's worked really good. Um, you know, it's about $6 a roll or something, but you get a large amount compared to what you would get with, the, to me, a roll. So uh, this is a good alternative if you don't want to spend a fortune on masking tape. It covers a lot of area. Again, it's, it feels and acts very much like the Tamiya tape. So, highly recommend that. So now I'm working on the, I have to move up to the body and do kind of that greenish blue weathering around the sides. I think I'm going to do that first. So I have to do the green around these um, circular parts right here. Of course, we need to paint the cockpit. And uh, just getting all that ready. Uh, I think the way I'm going to go, well actually I know the way I go on mounting it. Originally I just thought I'd use the original uh, display base um, to just kind of hold it up which just kind of grabs onto the uh, flaring there. Uh, but I had this um, this is a uh, projector mount I guess it, you think it's just really cheap it's about the cheapest one you get I think it was only like six or seven dollars I forget and I've mounted it to as you can see the back side um, just with some screws I think these are quarter inch screws it comes with a uh, kind of a plastic washer that screws on but these I'm pretty sure those are quarter inch screws uh, I haven't had a couple of those right now it's just kind of super glued in place I'm going to come back with some uh, two-part epoxy and make that make sure that's really uh, secured in there because uh, I don't want that falling off uh, but it's just kind of screwed into place I use two of them that way I can tighten down and it gives us a little bit of distance from it and so that will and then it's uh, as you can see it's uh, adjustable we can do any kind of angle and stuff and I think that'll look really nice so I'm pretty pleased with how that's looking we'll have the internal battery still so we don't have to worry about wires or anything I think with this switch instead of trying to mount it on the outside I think I'm just going to locate it on the inside here so we don't have some ugly switch showing up so I'm still waiting on my switch to come in uh, with everything that's going on right now with the coronavirus uh, I think shipping and stuff's being delayed so 
could be a while before I'm able to finish this project. So anyway, that's where we're at, and just going to work on some of this other painting right now. All right, as you can see, I got most of the uh, detailed painting done. Now it's looking a bit toyish at the moment, but we have to weather it, and there's quite a bit of weathering. And once I get it all weathered, I am going to go over a very light coat of like a white grade kind of uh, bring everything in together. I still have to paint the cockpit. I'm going to save to do that at the very last. Uh, that way we can paint that and then put the canopy on. So um, it's going to get to uh, doing all the weathering for this section. Uh, we'll be uh, bringing it all together here soon uh, with the uh, backside of it. So I have to connect the switches and the lights. I'm just trying to get this part done right now. All right, so most of the painting and a lot of the weathering is done. Um, I'm not going to show you until I reveal it. Uh, I just want to show you the inside. I'm about to seal it all up. As you can see, i got a bundle of wires here going. Uh, I was able to uh, put the battery into this part right here. I'll show you more of that when we finish it. Uh, the switch is connected down here. That's why these wires are running up. I have to leave a little bit of play in these wires so I can pull the battery and the wiring to the battery out. Um, I have some fiber optics hooked to the back of the cockpit area in here and I put some uh, electrical tape around it just, just to kind of hold it in place and I put a little hot glue on the electrical tape to hold that in place so it doesn't eventually peel off. Uh, we have our engine lights all connected so everything I've already tested, everything's looking good. Um, I think I have plenty of room in here for these wires. Um, but if I need to, if it doesn't close up easily, I can always come and trim some of these wires again. But I think there's plenty of room in there for that. So now I'm just going to join these two halves together. Okay, guys, well, here's my finished AMT Slave 1. Uh, again, I think it's approximately about a 185 scale model kit. It is a very nice size. Um, turned out really nice. I'm really uh, happy with this. Uh, the Slave 1 is uh, kind of a difficult paint job, much like the Millennium Falcon. There's a, actually a lot of different colors and things going on. I didn't worry about being exactly precise. Uh, I was mostly trying to get uh, approximately what was in there. I think one of the trickier parts is kind of this greenish blue um, paint. I don't know if it's like an old paint that's wore off or whatever, but that is probably one of the trickiest colors. Um, when I first put it, put it on, as you can see earlier in the video, the color is very bright, so I had to tone those down, uh, but at the end it all kind of worked out. So I did all my uh, colors, and a lot of it was mixing colors, so I don't have an exact paint for you. Uh, the kind of green-blue weathering on the side, um, you can probably see a little bit better here, uh, was very bright and uh, once I did most of or once I did all the uh, detailed painting I went over with just a light uh, white gray and this is from Vallejo's Mecca collection it was thinned down a little bit with some acrylic thinner airbrushed on just the whole model and uh, to really tone down that because this was really bright and I really toned it down quite a bit um, but it still uh, came out pretty good I didn't worry about masking off anything uh, on the different parts I actually just uh, uh, took a rag and wiped off the overspray and uh, didn't really worry about it a whole lot. It's a weathered vehicle So a little bit of spotting here and there or streaks here and there just kind of goes into the model uh, But I did kind of wipe away from the reddish area now my also uh, my original red I used like a dark red that was a little too red uh, went in back with my airbrush with this uh, uh, brown uh, RLM 26 from uh, Vallejo uh, Model Air and uh, this again I, I airbrushed over the red i didn't worry about covering everything it gave us a lot of different textures in there um, which i really like and a lot, a lot of color modulation and variation going on with all this in there but i think that rust color was a little bit more accurate to uh, what the what you see on the uh, studio model or in the movies so very pleased with that and again didn't worry about overspray it just kind of lent to the actual look there is a lot of uh, on the studio model, a lot of faded colors in there, so I think that contributed and helped out a lot. Uh, I did, did all the finished painting. Uh, I used a Mecca Collection matte varnish to uh, seal it in. This is one of my favorite matte varnishes to airbrush on. It does a really good job. Um, and everything. It's mounted to, again, this uh, This is, a uh, I think, a projector um mount like a projector ceiling mount you can get these pretty cheap so it is adjustable we just it's on this little ball joint so we can uh, adjust it any kind of way we want really and i really like that we have our battery uh, supply so we'll cut it on here um, 
Let me adjust this a little bit. So our battery is mounted inside the vehicle along with the on off switch. It just kind of pulls open. We have our switch right there. You can see the switch. You can see the battery. Again, there's some magnets holding that battery in place, but it can be pulled out if I need to. Uh, but the switch is right here. You can cut that on. And uh, that just slides back into position right there. And really happy that was, uh, uh, I'm really happy how that turned out. And it's all mounted inside. I don't have to worry about wires or connections or even the you know, hidden switch somewhere. It's all inside. Uh, one of the last things, uh, the la very last thing I did was install the glass. Obviously, putting on all those matte coats and everything, I didn't want to make, uh, mess up the glass. Let's take a look at the uh, engines. Pretty happy with how those came out. In the end, we have a, a nice variation between the different type of engines. We have the two round ones. I don't know exactly what each engine is supposed to do, but um, we do have some color variation in those. Again, we had 10 millimeter orange LEDs in there. Then we had some uh, uh, LED strip lights. Um, there were six of them on one strip uh, coming across there. And uh, just painted it up with different colors. Got some greens and grays. I mixed up some rust, added in some some black uh, just damage marks or scuff marks, whatever you want to do, just kind of, uh, you know, add to the look. It actually, uh, when I sealed it together, it actually came together pretty nicely. I didn't have any real issues getting it together. I put it together. I put some super glue on the uh, the sides there and there, came in, and I used some uh, Instaset to uh, dry the glue quick, and uh, it sealed up good. I don't have any light leaks because, as you remember, I sealed the lights with the aluminum foil behind because I... Uh, I don't think if I would have did that, we'd be seeing light leaks on the corners and in the side here. Uh, I don't think it sells that well. So I'm glad I did that to kind of uh, protect any light coming out from the source. Um, the uh, the wings or whatever these are uh, went on pretty nicely. They are glued in position. Um, they're meant to rotate, but I, I go with this kind of the, uh, the fixed look. Uh, but they went on and I didn't have really any issues putting those on, super gluing those on the position. And we have our lights. Um, if you can see here, you can see his uh, dashboard. We have the uh, fiber optics and the, his center light, which is just a piece of clear sprue that I cut and sanded down. Then we have some fiber optics in the back. Uh, this gave a little bit of life. Uh, I know that's not really canon, but I just want to add a little bit of life to the cockpit. I did make a little chair. I don't know if you can see it. Um, for Boba Fett, he's actually has a. His, actually, all it is is just a backing. It's not a real seat that he's glued to, just to give a little bit more detail, like he's actually sitting on something. That was just something made out of styrene. Of course, I added the guns and everything. But um, overall, it's really not a bad model. The biggest thing is you're going to have this seam down the middle. You're going to have to take care of, uh, which really wasn't a big deal. But other than that, it fit together for the most part pretty nicely. It didn't have any major fit issues or gap. Um, other than this one seam, um, everything went together pretty well. Um, so for an older model, I was really pleased, really happy with how it came out. Um, uh, the whole project, you know, I like how it's mounted on this stand. So I'm going to do a little work on this stand here. I ordered some, um, like the Mandalorian decals. Um, I'm going to put that on there and kind of seal that stand in uh, some uh, resin in, in some, sometime in the future. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, I really enjoyed the project. Um, I think it turned out really good. Uh, but anyway, hope everybody's doing well. Until next time, everybody have a good one.